from uh, Evansville. Shot 51% last year from the floor and averaged 13 points a game last year. Obviously, his first team all-conference. He wears number 13. I, I can assume for our fans, uh, they'll need to keep an eye on Dylan Penn because he'll be one of their better players. Yeah, good player. Uh, very unconventional. You know, he can break you down off the dribble. But he also posts up a lot, which you don't see a lot from a point guard, combo guard type player. He does a great job of uh, scoring in the post, whether it's a post move or getting by you. But he's a great passer, very competitive, very athletic. He has a tough matchup across the board. Ethan Claycomb had 19 points in their exhibition game uh, as well. He's a fifth-year senior from Vincennes. Actually played at Vincennes Lincoln High School. Uh, started his career at Indiana State. Has transferred 6'7", 205. Uh, averaged 10 points a game last year. What about him at 6'7", uh, the matchup problems he might present? Well, he can move so well. So, you know, he plays that four. Sometimes they can go extremely small and put him at the five. He can shoot the three. Um, but it, it's his movement, the way they cut. Um, he, he's very good in their system at just moving without the basketball, passing the basketball, knocking down shots, uh, knocking down plays. They obviously lost their best player um, from last year, so he's going to be expected along with Penn to do even more for him this year. One other guy I'll be keeping my eye on uh, tomorrow night, C.J. Fleming. He wears number 25, six foot, fifth year senior, 12 points in their game, uh, in their exhibition game. He averaged 12 a game last year. He's not a very big guy, six feet tall, but he just finds a way to score the ball, doesn't he? Yeah, he can shoot. You know, you, you can't leave him, but he it does a great job of shot faking and getting angles and then getting into you. He's a bulldog, um, very strong, sturdy player, gets into the paint, that creates a lot for other people also when he gets in there. But he's mainly looking to, to shoot that thing and, and, and drive it and put you in, and put you in a bind. You mentioned uh, getting to the paint. They are not an overly tall ball club. They have one guy that's large, that's taller than six foot eight. They're mostly guys six foot seven or shorter. Yet they had 48 points in the point uh, in the paint against Tiffin. When I look back at their numbers from last year, they are a team that scores a lot of points in the paint. You don't think about that with a smaller ball club. But is that just about their back cutting and their ability to get to the rim on layups? Yeah, it's continuous. It's not just like one cut then they're they're done. It's a uh, Cut, get out, back cut, overplay, cut again, get back out, cut again. And then now they get the defense under them, and then they make little tight curl cuts to come into the paint, especially when the ball's in the post. And then they, then they get their open threes that way. So people say to stay with them, but you stay with them. They cut right behind you and get those layups, and they're, they're very good at it. And uh, all those guys together – you know, they really mesh well together and play and understand their system. Their exhibition game was interesting because they did win. They beat Tiffin, who's a Division II school, 90-87. to 87. But they played it back on October the 28th, which seems forever ago. And that was the last time they played an actual uh, real competitive game. But the one thing I did pick up, and I, you've seen the film, I'm sure, Coach. Obviously, I haven't. I only saw the stats. But in that game, Tiffin, the opponent, shot 45 threes. Yes. And 22s, which I'm assuming that's not our game plan tomorrow <laughs> night, 45 threes and 22s. No, they, they spread them out and drove the ball and got it in a lot. And then just uh, set, you know, Tiffin just ended up shooting. They were aggressive. I mean, they were, they were driving the ball, looking to shoot quick and uh, played well. I was impressed watching that tape of Tiffin and just how good they were. I mean, they have to be one of the better teams in Division Two. At least they looked that way on film when they played Bellarmine. Uh, one other quick note on Bellarmine before we take a break. Uh, again, they're just in their second year of Division I basketball, but their home arena, Freedom Hall in Louisville. How nice is that to have Freedom Hall as your home facility when you're just in your second year of playing Division I basketball? More with Coach Painter in a moment on the Matt Painter Show presented by Jim Co. We'll be back after this break. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Get after the quarterback, 10th of the country in sacks. Here they come against O'Connell. He's in trouble, and he breaks free. Pump fakes, throws, ends up, touchdown! It's David Bell, third catch on that drive. Boilermakers hit first. Michigan at number seven. O'Connell throws complete for a first down. Garrett Miller is loose and then stumbles down to the 47-yard line. Tough sledding against this Michigan State front. Four-man rush. O'Connell pump fake. Now throws a deep ball. Going for Bell. And Bell caught it inside the 10. The defender fell down. So now second and goal for the Boilermakers after the two-yard loss. O'Connell to the end zone. And the pass is pulled in. Brock Thompson. Touchdown, Purdue. And 
Northrop moving into the backfield, and here comes a reverse and then a throw. And it's Anthrop who originally got the handoff that gets the catch. And he's loose inside the 25, reversing field, inside the 15, gets a block, inside the 10, to the end zone, touchdown Purdue! They run it though to Doru, pushing forward and in, touchdown Purdue, has the lead back. O'Connell's been too good to take off the field, let's see what he does in third and 10. Taking a shot, Bell somehow is left open, makes the catch inside the 30-yard line. Inside the 20, fighting for arm tackles. They finally get him down. O'Connell facing pressure, gets out of there. He throws on the run, and along the sideline, is it caught? Yes, they're going to say a catch is made by Miller. He was enormous in the fourth against Michigan last week. They fake it to him. Thorne in trouble, steps up, wrapped up. Got back to the line of scrimmage before he spun down by Sullivan. They scored on fourth down in the first half. Co. as we are live at Wolfie's Grill with the largest view of the game outside of Mackey Arena. Right here at Wabash Landing here in West Lafayette. Wolfie's Grill will be the host of the Matt Painter Show all season long. Thanks for those that are uh, checking out the show tonight on Facebook Live or maybe Twitter Live. Uh, Maybe on YouTube. I know they're checking in from Fort Stewart, Georgia tonight on Facebook Live from Attica, Indiana as well. Thanks to all of you who would check in from around the globe to watch our show on Monday nights. No one gets you closer to Big Ten Sports than Sirius XM. Tune in to shows on the Big Ten Radio hosted by experts like Ben Hartsock, A.J. Hawk, and John Jansen. Plus get conference news analysis and more from offseason through the postseason. They have your team covered anywhere you go, and now you can try them out for free. Get a free trial to take your team with you on your phone, online, and at home. Start listening at SiriusXM.com slash Big Ten SXM. Coach Painter, I, uh, I wanted to last Monday night talk to you about the changes on the staff, and I had totally, uh, totally forgot to do it. So while we have a segment here tonight, I would like you to talk about the new changes, uh, the new, well, one new, one recycled new, Paul Lusk joining your staff uh, after, of course, he was with you when you were first here at Purdue uh, the first time around. Uh, Coach Lusk was with you. And then uh, Terry Johnson has joined your staff, too, from Ohio State. He's also had coaching experience at Butler. You mind talking about what those two guys bring to the staff? Well, Paul obviously was um, we're on the same staff together at Southern Illinois, and then <clears throat> when we came over, we were on the staff together with Coach Katie in his last year, and then he was with us for six, seven years after that before heading to Missouri State as a head coach, and then he came to us from Creighton, and he'll be in charge of the defense. But Paul does a great job. He's got you know, great knowledge of the game, great experience, gets along with, uh, you know, with players, relates well with players. But I think he brings a, a personality and attitude um, to our staff that will really, really be beneficial. You know, Terry, same way, he's got a wealth of knowledge, obviously. It's, we have a lot of respect for, you know, Butler and their, their program and Brad Stevens and, you know, coaching uh, two Final Fours, you know, at Butler. Obviously, the success they've had with Chris Holtman, who's a, one of the best coaches in the country, you know, at Ohio State. And Terry, being from Anderson, being from Indiana, very fortunate that, you know, that he wanted to come back. And I told our guys about both about both guys, about what type of people they were, what kind of knowledge they'd bring to it. But more than anything, I thought it was a real backhanded compliment to our players that our guys wanted to come here and be on this staff and be at Purdue and, and, and coach them. And I think that's the one thing that you want to keep building your brand in a men's basketball program because you want good players, obviously, but you want good people, you want good coaches, and I think we got two great people that I think will really help us on our staff. And then P.J. Thompson, <clears throat> he was our GA, got his master's. Him and Grady got our master's. Grady Eifert went to Penn State with Coach Shrewsbury in a, in a video role. P.J. stayed here as director of player development after getting his master's. And then we hired uh, Spike Albrecht and then Tommy Luce as our GAs. Both of those guys are getting their master's. Spike's already got his master's, you know, from Purdue. So he'll be able to... Have an undergrad from Michigan, two masters, you know, from Purdue. For someone who doesn't like school, it's not bad, huh? <laughs> and he wants to get into coaching. He wants to get. I tried, <laughs> like Tommy. I tried doing everything in my power to stop Tommy from getting into coaching. I told him to have a, a regular, normal life, have fun, go tailgating, just you know, be a Purdue fan. And he he wouldn't. He didn't want to listen to any of it. So uh -huh. he got into coaching, and so 
he can be miserable for the next 40 years. Some guys just won't listen. Uh, <laughs> more with Coach Painter in a moment. Matt Painter show tonight presented by Jimco. This is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. This time she goes through the corner. Emma Ellis being leaned on there to finish off that third set. She does the job and Purdue takes a two sets to one lead. Colvin nearly blocked by McNamara. Here's Newton. Bush goes to Cleveland, right through the corner. Grace Cleveland, power and precision. Uh, Dave Shondell is coach. That was the first thing he talked about with all this senior leadership. The ability to get Caitlin Newton back for a fifth year after the COVID shortened season. A smart and the right move by the NCAA. Welcome back, everyone, to the Matt Painter Radio Show. We greet you tonight. From Wolfie's Grill, Wabash Landing in West Lafayette. Wolfie's Grill, they'll be hosting us all season long as we talk Boilermaker basketball. Jim Co. Constructors is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Matt Painter Radio Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics. Jim Co. Constructors says Boiler Up. Uh, Coach, since we won't have a chance to visit until next Monday here on the Coach's Show, just maybe a, a quick thought on Friday night's opponent, Indiana State. I know they have a new head coach in Josh Schertz and uh, played him last year, obviously, but that was with Greg Lansing as their coach. But uh, what do we know about uh, the, the new-look Sycamores? You know what? I, As you know, um, I don't dive into the – I only dive into the opponent that's coming up. And so I don't know much about their guys besides a couple of the – you know, they have Key, who's returning, who's been – seems like he's been there for about six or seven years, <laughs> um, who can really score, a kid from Tennessee. That We played him in that one scrimmage. He was – that was, mm. I think, his freshman year then. That was a while ago. Yeah. Um, but, no, he's a, a, a very good player, but I just don't know their personnel because I haven't dove into it yet, and I don't uh, start to do that until Wednesday morning after we watch film of our game from Tuesday night. But he obviously, Josh Schertz, has had a lot of success at Lincoln Memorial, been to a, a, a bunch of NCAA tournaments, had, had a lot of success there, and uh, won about 82 83% of his games. Wow. Tournament championships conference regular season championships, you know, going to the tournament, I think like 11 out of 13 years. And so he has been, you know, beyond successful there. And uh, Sherrard Klingscales is a good friend of mine. He's the AD there. So hats off to him for making such a great hire and making a tough hire. I think I, I've never understood like when people kind of look at Division Two and Division Three coaches and then they got to bring them up to Division One. like there's difference. Like there's like, you know, I was at Division Three for a year. I was at Division Two for a year. There, there was a lot of coaches that could coach Division One. I. I mean, a bunch of coaches. They're very, very good coaches, just like they're in high school. There's a lot of good high school coaches that can coach in college, and sometimes it's just, you know, you know, somebody in charge, you know, just making the right hire, getting the right guy. So hats off to Sherrard for hiring Josh and, and making a great hire for Indiana State. But, um, you know, if, if anything points towards the success they've had, when they were at Lincoln Memorial, you know, he, he's going to have his team ready to play us on Friday. Our final segment with Coach Painter, brought to you by Jimco. When we come back, this is Boilermaker Basketball from Learfield. Right now, that's going to only help down the line of the season as Ivy lets the three hit. But 
Aiden Ivey. Make that a tough shot. Spomich down low. Williams, great pass wide open first. And Caleb first says welcome back to Mackey Arena. With a Hunter now finding Newman. Newman from downtown gets the friendly roll. Brandon Newman. the shooting ability and any Matt Painter team you know has you gotta be a shooter just like Ivy right there knocking it down from the corner an area of his game he's continued to work on you Wendy shooting the rock well from the field 48.6 percent as Ivy now it's a 10 point one meter lead as we approach seven minutes to play Newman knocks that down Side once again, Edie catches it and jams it in with two hands. That was a great pass from Stavanovic into Edie, and then hey, just gotta do the work. When you're right underneath the basket, might as well slam it home. Three back on offense first. Barney Waddell. Zach Edie! The punisher! Up nice snag by. Final segment of our Coach Painter radio show on this Monday night. Again, thank you for joining us to talk Boilermaker basketball. I'm Rob Blackman. Big thank you to Ray Klabmeyer, who served as our in-studio engineer this evening at our Learfield Studios. Uh, thanks to Wes Scott, who was our on-site engineer tonight. I bring up Wes Scott's name because Wes is actually part of my, uh, my final segment here tonight. Uh, a little tidbit, a little nugget for you that actually I wasn't going to have a nugget for the fine fans here at the – in the building tonight, but this one literally smacked me right in the face right before the show started. I was looking over the stat sheet from last Thursday night's game against the University of Indianapolis, and there is an error on uh, the listing of whom the three officials were that worked the game. According to the official stats from last Thursday night at Mackey Arena, the three officials that worked the game were Bo Borowski, Bobby Riddell, and Wes Scott. So no wonder we won the game. Wes Scott was in charge of the officiating as well. Thank you, Wes, for helping lead the Boilermakers to victory with some one-sided officiating. Uh, and, of course, Bobby Riddell, my broadcast partner, uh, I'm not sure how good of an official he would have been, but he certainly would have been very one-sided. So Bob Riddell worked with Bo Borowski and Wes Scott Thursday night. Of course, Purdue won that game against the University of Indianapolis. Uh, speaking of Purdue basketball, tomorrow night, Tuesday night, it's a 7 o'clock tip for the season opener. Bellarmine visiting the Boilermakers at Mackey Arena. 6 o'clock for the broadcast fans. 6 o'clock our broadcast time. 7 o'clock for the tip, Purdue and the Bellarmine Knights. And then for those uh, listening along these Purdue Radio Network lines, it's a busy week because Purdue basketball tomorrow night, as I talked about, then on the network Wednesday night, it's the Jeff Brom Radio Show right back here at Wolfie's Grill. That starts at 6 o'clock Wednesday night to talk Boilermaker football and that should be a fun show, recapping that victory over Michigan State from this past weekend. Then on Friday, it's right back to Boilermaker basketball because Friday night, Purdue at home against Indiana State. Now, remember, that's an 8.30 tip-off time, a little bit later on Friday night, fans. 7.30 for the broadcast, 8.30 for the tip for Purdue and Indiana State from Mackey Arena. And then Saturday, we're right back to Purdue football because the Boilermakers, of course, will be on the road at a Columbus to play Ohio State in a 3.30 game. That's a 3.30 game Saturday with a 2.30 pregame show. So a very busy week coming up here on the Purdue Radio Network with lots of Boilermaker basketball and football as well. So uh, hopefully you're as excited about it as we are because we're going to be certainly very busy this week talking Boilermaker sports. Purdue basketball tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, right here on the network, 6 o'clock for the pregame show. Myself, Bobby Bucket, Trudell, and Wes Scott will be... Hey, yo, baby. 25th year. <laughs> 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 <laughs>